Welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Join us every Wednesday to learn about the latest cutting-edge developments in the real-time communications industry. ClueCon Weekly is brought to you by FreeSwitch Solutions. Get support and professional services directly from the creators of the FreeSwitch open source project, solving your issues in the most efficient, stable, and scalable way possible. Get the FreeSwitch advantage. Visit freeswitch.com. Also brought to you by ClueCon, the premier technology conference for developers by developers. Join us every summer in Chicago. ClueCon kicks off on Monday with our annual hackathon, The Coder Games, followed by three days of technology-rich presentations discussing telecom, WebRTC, and IoT from developers around the world. To learn more, visit cluecon.com or call 877-74-A-CLUE. And welcome to ClueCon Weekly. Today is the 23rd of January, 2019. And this week we're going to be joined by SC Lee uh, from Polycom. If you don't know SC, uh, he's been around uh, telephones forever in a day. It seems like uh, he's worked on so many major different uh, uh, hardware devices out there from ATAs to desk phones um, that it's, it's, uh, it, it's crazy the number of devices that he's had a hand in. Uh, so today he's going to be showing off the OB integration on some of the new Polycom phones. So uh, you guys hang out for that. It's going to be really interesting. And uh, hopefully we'll all get a bunch of cool ideas that uh, we can take home with this. Uh, first, let's jump over and see Miss Abby for the news. Miss Abby, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful today. Thank you for asking. Hi, everybody. And thank you once again for joining us today on ClueCon Weekly. So our biggest piece of news for today is that IT Expo is coming up really quickly and we're going to be there so we're having um, a lot of different events that we're going to be participating in and we want you to come find us and join us for those so one of those events is our free switch training on january 30th so that's january 30th is our free switch training and that is only for 25 dollars, which is a big big discount because we're so excited to be there uh you can also come find us at our booth during it expo for a chance to win a signed copy of the free switch book Plus, we just really want to talk to you. You can ask us questions about free switch, about signal wire, or to just chat. Um, we also uh, have Anthony Minasali speaking on a panel. So if you're interested in that, check out the Next Gen Collaboration Tools, What Makes a Company Successful panel on Friday, February 1st, and that is at 9 a.m. in room 208. So if you're interested in seeing Anthony Minasali talk on a panel, speaking a little bit about what makes company successful, you can come find him at uh, 9 a.m. on February 1st. Uh, my favorite piece of news, as always, is that ClueCon always comes up quicker than you think it will, and this year that is going to be August 5th through August 8th. So make sure you save your calendars or save your date in your calendars so you don't book something else. And I have even better news for everybody. Right now, we are running our early bird special for ClueCon. And that means that we are offering uh, registrations for only $5.99, which is the lowest price for ClueCon registration in history. So if you already know that you're going to go to ClueCon, you go every year, or you're already excited about it, I would sign up now. I would register now because you will be getting the lowest price you can ever possibly get at $5.99. So you can go visit our website. Uh, the registration button is really easy to find on there, ClueCon.com. And that's all the news I have for today. Bye, guys. Back to you, Ken. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Abby. Uh, now, let's jump over and see uh, Mr. Mike Mavrudis. Mike, who do we got uh, for Community Corner this week? Hello. We have a question for Mike Jarris, again. <laughs> <laughs> um, we actually have a really interesting question from the Free Switch users mailing list. And the awesome. question is from Richard Traverso. And he asks, hi, everyone. I'm totally new to Free Switch and PBX software in general. I'm trying to build a small directory IVR to start getting the hang of it. I'm currently stuck, and I need your help, please. Awesome. So this is great because we get the best answers, right? Um, this is the setup. I've got a free switch on the first machine with a Lua extension that contains a basic IVR application. When a user calls the IVR and performs a choice, I want to connect him to 
a specific remote SIP address. I tried with the transfer command at first, but in my understanding, I could only use it if I wanted to connect him to another user slash extension on the same server, which in my case. So I tried with bridging instead. Right now, the IVR doesn't even ask for a choice. It just plays audio right now. The IVR doesn't even, it just tries to play a file to a fixed remote address for a test, say user at example.com, which in turn just plays a different prompt. When I call the Lua extension, I correctly hear the audio of the first prompt, but nothing from the second. I also tried starting voice recognition on user at example.com, which works instead. Yet even though apparently user at example.com can hear me through the bridge, I cannot hear his prompt. If I call directly user at example, I hear the prompt correctly. I do not even know where to start from. Any advice, please? Which kind of configs or logs would be useful to diagnose the problem? Thanks in advance. And then he has a couple of stanzas of his Lua code. So, so Mike, we got a couple different issues here, right? Yeah, I got a whole bunch of pieces working there. Um, where do we start? Um, using Lua for IVRs, uh, especially more complicated IVRs, is great. It's a great tool for that. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, awesome. Um, transferring only for local extensions, not true. Um, Transferring does go back into the dial plan, but the dial plan can have whatever you want in it. So uh, an example of one thing you could do in the Lewis script um, is set that bridge uh, string, the, the originate string you put into bridge as a channel variable, and then transfer to a different context, the context that basically all it does is bridge to that channel variable. Um, and uh, it, it'll go off and do the thing. That's uh, first off. That's I'm going to say that's probably the best way to do this. Um, I don't like doing bridge within Lua because a um, couple things work a little bit differently. It doesn't handle things exactly the same, and you have the overhead of Lua the entire time you're in that bridge call, which is totally unnecessary. So use Lua as kind of a more complicated version of make your decisions and then get the call on its way to do its own thing without having to control it at every moment, which is what Lou would be doing. So um, the first thing I would do is I'd change it to use transfer to a different context that from a channel variable, pull the string, bridge that way. I don't think that's gonna fix your problem. Um, it sounds like this is some sort of NAT configuration issue based on you not hearing the other side, but them hearing us. Uh, it sounds like NAT config on that free switch, as in that box is behind NAT and uh, sending the wrong addresses in the um, in the STP. So you're gonna want to check all of your IP, RTP IP, external RTP IP, and all the ACLs related to that on that free switch box and look at the SIP signaling and see that um, the right addresses that you expect are being used in the STP were sending in the initial invite. Um, that's probably where you're going to find the problem um, for the one-way audio issue. Uh, so I, th I think two separate issues. I strongly recommend um, not doing the bridging in the Lua. Um, it's extra complication that you don't need, and the transfer way is a better approach. Okay, so so the takeaway is, well, what about this? Why don't we why don't we just keep it all in the XML? Why do, why do we even need Lua in this example? Um, for a simple IVR, you don't. There's um, we have the XML IVRs that give you kind of a predefined, you know, select one for this, two for that kind of settings. Um, those are nice uh, if that simple use case matches your needs. Um, if it doesn't, um, it just it just won't work for you. So 
And we uh, can still, even even in XML, we can still make it pretty complicated with something like regex or just sending it to, you can, know, extensions. But, I mean, the, the dial plan we never really just designed to be this thing that you can make branching decisions over and over again. Like it's a one decision and go thing. So to do that in dial plan, you essentially have to keep transferring back into dial plan. It's not really a great approach and ends up pretty fragmented. The XML IVR approach, um, on the other hand, is designed exactly for this application. And if that fits your needs, um, it's even better than uh, using Lua. If you need something more complicated, something that you know combines that with going out to a database or some other some other sort of thing, then uh, that's not going to work for you. But uh, in the simple cases, the XML IVR is a great application to uh, do very simple uh, setups for you. Okay, so, and then the second part is the takeaway is stay out of Lua as much as possible. Keep the session state in free switch. Uh, I, I would do so, yes. You Use Lua for what it's good for, but don't try to use it for everything. Cool. Answers from the experts. Thanks, Mike. No problem. So today we have SC Lee from Polycom. Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me back for uh, episode two of uh, Plantronics Polycom uh, OB endpoints. Yes, and, and so today we're gonna be talking about some how to, how, to, how to really customize and do dynamic things with the phones, huh? Absolutely. So the, the focus today uh, is, uh, we call it OB for developer, very developer focus, uh, kind of showing all the different hooks and programmability uh, that is currently available on the OB edition, right? So I'm uh, going to show some tricks, uh, you know, on how to, you know, drive very application-centric experience on the phone uh, and you know all the different web hooks available on the phones. Show some examples, and hopefully uh, by the end of this session, uh, the audience uh, will be able to go out and start uh, building uh, the next application on the uh, OB uh, uh, Polycom phones. Well, that's cool. But before we start, why don't tell us about you? Awesome, and Polycom. Definitely. Uh, so let me start off with uh, Plantronics Polycom, and I'll tell uh, a little bit of myself. Uh, so uh, as you guys are aware, uh, Plantronics uh, bought Polycom back around July of uh, 2018. Uh, and since then, uh, I would say we are the, uh, uh, the premier endpoint provider uh, for any ecosystem out there, right? You name it, right? Uh, we have... Uh, uh, we work really well with FreeSwitch, right? And we have solutions that range from headsets, and, and I'm actually one of, wearing one of them now, right? Uh, all the way down to a desktop phones and all the way up to a, uh, an immersive uh, video experience, right? Uh, so we consider ourselves the Switzerland of uh, communication endpoints, right? Uh, any audio uh, device you need, uh, we are your one-stop uh, shopping. Uh, a little bit of myself, uh, uh, you know, like can kind of, you know, give you guys a quick glimpse on it. I've uh, been working in this industry for the last uh, two decades now, actually. Uh, started off my career uh, working uh, in the CLAC uh, and carrier space uh, for a company called uh, Telabs, uh, where uh, I was working as a software developer uh, for their uh, transport system. And since then, uh, you know, I was given the opportunity to uh, help uh, Linksys Cisco uh, develop uh, one of the first ATA uh, in the industry, right? Back in the 2003, 2004 days when companies like Vonage, uh, you know, are looking at ways to build a uh, telephone uh, adapter, uh, you know, so send this. It's, it's the support spas. Exactly, exactly. Yep. <laughs> I still we... have one in use. <laughs> So yeah, so I was given the opportunity uh, uh, to join uh, Linksys Cisco to help drive that and actually take that little uh, uh, SIP uh, technology and provisioning and put it into the uh, the, two, the iconic blue and gray Linksys router, 
right? And that really, you know, you know, propel the whole voice of IP industry, right? People say, wow, you know, you have a router, it provides QoS, good audio quality, uh, we ship millions of devices to, to Vonage. Uh, and since then, you know, uh, we also built, built up more uh, SIP endpoints, right? We built up one of the first uh, Wi-Fi phones in the world, the WIP 330. I'm not sure you guys are aware. I was the one that's driving that, <laughs> the WIP 300. Uh, uh, and we also built a couple of cordless, uh, uh, you know, a solution for Yahoo, for Skype, right? And uh, we evolved that product to uh, the Cisco spa phones. Uh, that's actually selling, uh, uh, still selling very well in the market. Uh, and uh, I was, was also given the opportunity to work on some pure SaaS product. Uh, I worked on that for about three years. Uh, it's now part of Alime, a product called Dow IQ, which is a pure cloud-based uh, communication platform, omni-channel communication platform. And uh, most recently, uh, prior to me joining uh, Plantronics Polycom, uh, I was responsible for building up the uh, WebEx for developer uh, ISV uh, uh, ecosystem, right? Looking at ways to build applications uh, and solutions around, uh, you know, uh, uh, ISV, independent software vendors, right? We work with partners like Salesforce, Oracle, SAPs, you name it, right? So now I'm very happy to be part of Plantronics Polycom. Uh, I do think this is the right place to be. Uh, and uh, we do have the right endpoints and the right uh, intellectual property and software endpoints and cloud uh, to help change this market. Uh, that is a quick five minutes overview of Plantronics and a little bit of myself. So I got to tell you, I still have that. I still have that spot. It, it connects to my alarm system. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So I'm, I'm going to show you how to connect uh, the OB edition, the Plantronics Polycom endpoints to your alarm system and more. So, uh, you know, I'm very excited to be here uh, to kind of share that with the team. OK, so uh, let's get started. Awesome. Let's jump straight in. So uh, you can see my slides now? OK, yes, so I up. assume the answer is yes. <laughs> so, so let me jump in. So the goal today, like I say, uh, this is episode two. Uh, I was back a couple of months back just to talk about the hardware. My goal today is purely focused on programmability, right? So I call that uh, O for D, <laughs> OB for developer. Uh, but before jumping in, you know, I do need to provide one slide about this hardware and this product, right? Uh, we launched the OB edition of the Polycom VVX X50 back in November. It's been two months now, right? This is a set of endpoints that provides legendary Polycom experience. Great audio, great full duplex speakerphones, right? Uh, acoustic fans, right? Combine that with the OB software that provides you with the unparalleled flexibility. And now we actually price the hardware. We actually develop a new set of hardware that's so cost effective that anyone in this market, should, any users should be able to afford uh, any of these endpoints that I show here, right? So the three key pillars of the OB edition, number one, unparalleled flexibility. And I hope by the end of this session, you guys uh, will understand more uh, what I'm trying to emphasize here and why do I call it unparalleled flexibility. Number two, the legendary audio experience, Opus Codec, G.722, full duplex uh, 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 you know, speakerphones, right? Acoustic fans to block out all the noise on the background. Give it a try. And you guys will know why people you know, named uh, Polycom as the best audio SIP endpoints in the market. And last but not least, is the ease of implementation. Right, the OB edition are all cloud managed and they're all fully programmable, right? That's the reason why I call it O4D, right? OB for developer. And my goal today is to show you all the different programmability of the OB edition. Okay, so let's jump straight in, right? Uh, what are the three key points uh, that I would like to deliver today, right? Or what are the three key subjects <laughs> Uh, that I will try to uh, educate or, or show the team, uh, the audience today. Number one uh, is what we call our OBXML APIs, right? Uh, many of you are probably very familiar with this. It's a very common uh, 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 implementation by many of the peers out there, right? And the reason why many phones, IP phones, leverage this framework is because it's very lightweight, 
right? You don't have to go load a browser on it. Uh, you don't have to go write tedious JavaScripts. Uh, you know, you just have a very nice formatted XML, send it via a secure channel, right? Over SSL, HTTPS, and the phone will now display what you want the phone to ask the user uh, uh, for information or to drive richer content to the user that's sitting in front of the desk, right? So I'm gonna show you how to uh, uh, write some of this XML APIs and hopefully by the end of this session, I hope everyone in this audience will be able to go pull up the OB edition and start writing some advanced applications and game-changing user experience on a desk phone, right? Because I really think, or we really think at Plantronics that a phone cannot just be a, a, a audio device, right? It needs to be more than that. Leverage the big screen and drive richer content to the screen. So I'm gonna show you how to uh, push uh, uh, XML content to the phone, how to pull XML content from the cloud uh, after the phone then display it. Uh, what are some of the APS available? You know, I just, just a quick glimpse on it. And again, I'll go into details on each one of them uh, in a couple of slides from now. Second key subject that I'd like to touch on is our webhook interface. Okay, uh, you guys probably are very familiar with webhook. Webhook is basically upon any event, send it some webhook to the cloud with, you know, uh, a reference ID of the call, right? Uh, uh, maybe a duration, right? Uh, maybe the call ID, right? Uh, then have your application server then decide what is the next best action for the phone to do, right? Do you want to screen pop? Uh, you know, MITES uh, uh, CRM data, right? Uh, MITES uh, uh, latest, uh, the last five uh, orders uh, from XYZ restaurants, right? Uh, so I'll show you guys how to leverage, I would say the three uh, key ones and apologize for the typing there. It's actually ringing, connected and ended state. <laughs> so uh, I don't mean ringing, connected and ringing state. Actually it's ringing, connected and ended state. Uh, so a, a typo there. Uh, and the next one is to show you outside of this three states, uh, if you want to subscribe uh, uh, to a Bluetooth status, right? As you guys are aware on our OB2182, it supports an integrated Bluetooth, right? You could pair your smartphone to our 2182, uh, uh, synchronize your address book to it, uh, you know, uh, and if anyone calls you on your smartphone, you'll be able to answer the call on the desk phone using the, the, the speakerphone on the desk phone. Uh, if if you want to write applications to uh, monitor whether the agent is actually uh, close to the phone, or whether he's connected to the phone via Bluetooth, uh, we do provide a, a method for you to webhook all the status, right? And we provide three different types. One is call status. Uh, the other one is service status. So uh, on most of our OB phones, we support SIP, six SIP registrations. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to, you know, service up, down, uh, you know, and all these are for application layer, right? Because as you guys are aware, the service provider probably know this information. Uh, but as a developer, you now will be able to write apps to leverage this application layer, right? Um, and I'm going to show you guys uh, some of this uh, capability. And many of them actually do have uh, some live examples of how it looks uh, uh, and, and the response from it. And last but not least, uh, uh, you know, we do have a rich set of management APIs. Uh, I know that Wilson uh, from my team uh, 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 was at one of, uh, you know, free switch uh, presentation just to talk about this topic, but I'll give you guys a glimpse on it, right? And the reason why I want to do that is it really completes our picture, uh, our, our, our picture here, right? Uh, I'm going to be focusing on application building. Uh, but at the same time, you know, building application requires you to manage it via provisionings, uh, you know, service providers, distributors, how do you manage the platform from deployment perspective, right? Give you guys a glimpse of that uh, set of APIs too. Uh, and without delay, let's jump straight in. So uh, we talk about programmability and we talk about push or pull of OBXML, right? So uh, <laughs> this is probably, I, I would say I have two slides with, with lots of words. This is probably one of the two, right? Uh, I try to keep my slides as little words as possible. Uh, and please pay attention from your top left and I'll talk my way down, right? And what is this for, right? It's basically uh, for third party uh, uh, application vendors or what we call independent software vendors uh, to go out and write application, very lightweight. You know, on the right, you see some a very quick glimpse on it, right? Uh, and have it downloaded to the phone or pushed to the phone 
and the phone now will display uh, that rich content. And later on, I have a few examples to show you guys what that is, right? Uh, and what that allows you to do, moving to bullet number two, it allows you to tie in your CRMs, your POS system, your medical records, right? Your call queue uh, to, on, uh, with the phone, right? Because I think 80 to 90% of the phones deployed out there are not leveraging the screen of the phone, right? You have this colored screen, you have this soft keys, dedicated hard keys. Make full use of it. Don't just use it for receiving phone calls and off-hook and on-hook, right? Create a richer experience by driving more content to the screen of the phone itself. And, and like I say, I mean, moving to the third bullet item, right? We support two models. One is a pull, right? You push a button on the phone, the phone will fetch it. Another one is a push uh, via SIP notify. And the benefits, right? Allows application uh, developers to go build uh, third-party applications uh, uh, and then deliver amazing experience for the end customer. So let's talk about the OBXML pool model, right? Uh, how do you pull, you know, uh, I'll show you guys a glimpse of some of this XML body, right? How do you pull it and how does it look on the phone, right? So let me kind of quickly walk you through the, the model here. Uh, so let's play our scenario, right? So I'm not putting in the center here, the soft switch, the free switch, the session border controller, right? So think of this as this phone is, is registered somewhere to a service provider. And here as a developer, uh, you're building this application, right? You want to be able to sell this application to Citibank, to Chase, right? And you build this application, you host your own server. And this server is basically, you know, uh, you know some PHP, you name it. Uh, and what you want to do is have the phone uh, fetch this body. And for this example here, uh, if you look at the, the body of the message, it's actually just a text menu, right? And this text menu is to allow you to go in and, uh, and set uh, your uh, call recording mode, right? Whether the next call that I'm going to be making, I want to turn on call recordings, or do I want to turn off call recordings, OK? So the first thing you do is, you know, on the phone, uh, you go in and configure which buttons on the phone, right? As you guys are aware, on the OB edition, uh, almost all buttons are programmable except for the dial pad, okay, uh, and, and the volume. Uh, so you could program any of your line keys, any of your soft keys, uh, you know, the three buttons on the left of this phone, if you see that the conference, the, the, uh, the hole, right, uh, and, and the other one I believe is, is voicemail. Uh, we allow you to program that to be anything, and one of them could be what we call action URL, right? So look at this, it's called function, we call it action URL, right? Uh, and what you could do is go and say, hey, you know what? Uh, for this example here, I say the number three key on the left of the phone, I want it to be purely uh, 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 focus, uh, focusing on uh, turning on call recordings on and off or doing some you know, amazing uh, uh, settings, right? So you go in, all you need to do is three settings, right? Assign it to action URL, put in where the phone needs to call, right? HTTP, HTTPS, right? Uh, when you hit the button and name it whatever you want. Right, so once it's named, uh, the phone will now have the button assigned to this uh, uh, action URL, right? And the user goes in and say, hey, I want to set my call recording modes, or I want to uh, tell Salesforce uh, that for the next call to Mike, uh, I don't want this call recorded, right? And this call recording for some reason is handled by Salesforce, okay? Uh, now you go in, you press this button, uh, the phone basically will go out and say, hey, uh, you're telling me that this button is assigned to action URL. I press that. I'm going to call this XML application server. The XML application server say, hey, uh, I know who you are. Uh, because in the body, when you, when you call it, we actually append a set of MAC address, serial number, uh, uh, you, know, you name it. We allow you to define different type of, uh, of variables that you want to send as part of these webhooks uh, so that your application server will identify you and send the body that's specific to you and your endpoint, right? And bam, that's it, right? The phone gets it. Now it pops up with this uh, a screen and you'll be able to go in, hey, you know what? Let me set call record on. Let me set call record off, right? Set it. Again, uh, the phone will now send back the application server. Now for the next call going through uh, Salesforce, uh, it will not get recorded or you will get recorded, right? So this is a, just a very simple example of a pool model. Okay, and one thing I do want to highlight, you know, going into the phone and setting the button to be action URL, 
You could do it in many different methods, right? What I'm showing here is going to the web page and configuring it. Uh, you could also use <laughs> our OBXML config to actually update any parameters on our phone, right? Or you could use our PDMS SP or OB Talk APIs to go in and update this view without you sitting in front of the phone to go in and make this change, right? Uh, for simplicity, I'm showing this because what I really want the audience to do is at the end of this session, pop out your OB phones, go to the phone web page and try it out, right? Uh, load some of these simple examples and uh, start to get creative on the things that you're able to do uh, with our programmability. Okay, so we talk about a pool approach. Let's talk about a push approach, right? Uh, so today uh, on the OB edition, we support pushing an, uh, uh, a uh, OB XML body to the phone via SIP notify, right? And what it means is that it requires your device to be registered to your uh, 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 PBX of choice. And for this example, I'm going to use free switch, okay? And have free switch then issued a SIP notify uh, to the endpoint that's registered to it, right? So uh, same thing, right? So for this example here, I basically show that you have a phone, you have a soft switch, you know, this could be a free switch, you name it. And then you have application server uh, that, you know, you are trying to push this XML content to the phone, right? So no configuration needed on the phone. Uh, while they are configuration in terms of, you know, uh, uh, you know, making sure that you're only allowed to receive SIP from free switch, right? All the uh, uh, security related settings, you need to make sure you set that up, right? And the phone will only receive that SIP notify from an allowed uh, SIP registered uh, server, okay? And what you do in this case is that your application server will call free switch and say, hey, free switch, I want you to uh, uh, screen pop uh, on SC's uh, phone the option to uh, turn on or off call recordings, right? And this is uh, what I want to do, right? So you go in, send it to free switch. Free switch will now create the SIP notify to the phone. And the three things that I do want to note, right? So the SIP notify has to have an event type of OBHI XML, right? And the content type is application slash XML, right? And at the bottom, I show an example of a SIP notify message, right? So this is all you need to do. Send a SIP notify to the phone. Uh, it has to come from an allowed uh, 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 registered uh, uh, you know, SIP proxy, right? Part of your six SIP registration uh, that, we, that we offer today, right? And in the SIP notify body, you then embed uh, your uh, XML message, right? And what do you get next? The phone will then screen pop, right? Uh, and and uh, some of this is uh, let's let's play out a scenario, right? So you're working on a CRM, and uh, you know you're just about to get ready for phone call, and and the CRM knows that, and yeah, you see that hey, wow, uh, you know my phone just you know screen popped me uh, for a choice. I now will be able to go and just hit the physical button on the phone and set my uh, next uh, communication channels and and some of the relevant settings on it. Okay. So what are some of the uh, OBXML available? Again, <laughs> I started off by saying that I have two slides with lots of words. Uh, this is one of the two. And following from here, uh, I don't have as many words <laughs> on my slides. But this is kind of for you to take away, right? Uh, from top down, right? So we offer uh, two, four, six, eight, nine, nine, nine different OBXML, right? Uh, text manual, I just show you an example, just a, a, you know, a manual with many different options. A text screen is just a screened. Uh, with you know many different widths in the body, and I'll show you an example of that. Uh, input area, right? Uh, if you want to check for flight information, uh, you want to go in and, and search for a CRM. You want to put in the CRM number, last name, first name, you name it. You put a uh, you create multiple lines for user to ask information. Input screen uh, is more for a single screen for you to type multi lined right? Uh, if you want to. Uh, support text messaging. As you guys are aware, on our OB2182, we support a USB keyboard, right? You can put a USB keyboard to our OB2182 and create a text messaging app. Uh, and, and for that, you want to use the input screen. It's one big area for you to write lots of messages. Uh, we drive, uh, 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 you could create uh, many different type of uh, cloud directory using our OBIP phone directory. Image file, send an image to the screen. 
uh, execute. Execute is huge. You could do a lot of things to execute. <laughs> uh, you could have the phone off hook, on hook, make a phone call, right? Uh, you could go in and trigger, uh, uh, you know, refresh or background screen. And I'll show you guys an example of that, right? Uh, you could uh, go in and, uh, you know, change ringtones, you name it, right? Uh, IP phone status, just to send a status to the top of the screen. And last but not least, I kind of shared with you guys that earlier, right? Instead of going to the phone web page and making changes to the uh, setting, you could use our programmability to update the config from your workflow without having to go to the web page of the phone. We call it the IP phone configuration. Okay, uh, just some screenshots of uh, some of the OBXML examples, right? Uh, you know, I try to you know not fit too many of them, but I think this will summarize all the nine uh, that are available today, right? So on the top left, uh, we call it the IP phone input screened, right? Again, the difference between screen and area is that instead of in screen, we give you multiple lines, area is one big area for you to type long strings on it. That is the only difference, right? So with this, you could go in and ask for flight information. Please enter your carrier, right? Please enter your last three digit of your social. Uh, you could program what the soft key uh, is gonna do, traffic weather, submit sends it to the cloud, and then you will pop out the next set of information, right? It makes the experience very, very rich. Uh, moving to the right, we have a text menu, icon menu. Again, the difference between text menu, icon menu is if you want to make it uh, uh, more graphical, right? Like instead of set record on, you want to put a, a recorder button on the left of that description, you then use our icon menu, right? If you just want all text, you just use text menu, right? So again, very simple menu for you to go in and set settings. On the right is what we call a text screen, right? Uh, this is very widely used for upcoming meetings, right? Uh, hey, you know, uh, you know, meeting scheduled with uh, Dr. Lee at 1 p.m. Uh, do you want to join now, right? So, you know, when there's a meeting coming out, you just screen pop to the phone, right? And the phone, oh yeah, there's a meeting coming out. Let me just join straight away instead of you. Hey, let me find a meeting ID, the password, the pause, and the whole. You could pre-program all those in that join string. So when the user press that, he immediately will dial out, wait, pause, put a password, and you'll be able to join the meeting on a single button push, right? Uh, I do want to highlight for all these options that I show here, they all have a soft key options for you to define what you want that to be. And the soft key option could be another OB XML fetch for a different type of OB XML experience on the screen, right? So you can make it very, very interactive. Moving to the bottom left, we have IP phone directory. Again, this allows you to go in and set up a cloud-based directory, right? Uh, assign each one of them as a number. When, when I go to Sherman or Wilson, when I hit that, it will automatically dial uh, Sherman or Wilson at that extension. On the right is the image file. Uh, you could screen pop an image on the screen. For this case, uh, uh, I've been demoing this. It's very powerful, right? Uh, emergency notification, right? You could... Uh, uh, screen pop the screen with emergency notification. Say, hey, please leave the building now. Maybe program a few of the soft key to say acknowledge, right? Or oh, I'm leaving now, right? Or oh, I, I, I'm not going to leave, right? Uh, I'm going to go fight this uh, intruder, right? Uh, you could program any soft keys you want at the bottom as a way to acknowledge uh, this image notification. And one thing I do want to note, you can make it more, more exciting by perhaps sending an audio announcement on top of it, right? And the way you do that is via OB XML execute, where you do a play of an audio file, right? So when you receive this, not only will you see this big emergency alert, you have this beep, 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 you know, or this audio file that says, hey, please leave now, right? Press this button to acknowledge that you received this message, right? Uh, and all those are available on the OB edition today, and I highly encourage all of you to try that out. Uh, to the right is what we call IP phone status. Uh, as you guys are aware, today we have a top bar. Uh, uh, you could use them, uh, you know, to program them as, uh, 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 you know, time, date. Uh, but if you don't want to use that, you could use that as a way to send message to the screen, to send status, right? I like this because uh, it's very interactive, right? Like for this one here, I say, please join us for Clue Code presentation, right? Uh, I could send another message with session number two, and you actually see strolling. Right. If I want to overwrite this particular message, I will set it to I will send another message with the same session ID, and it will just overwrite that. Right. So uh, I really think that screen size that that title bar is underutilized today, and there are many ways for you to create very creative and innovative messaging 
uh, to your employees and to your users. Okay, uh, so we talk about you know uh, all the OBXML that actually will show something on the screen. What about those that kind of perform something on the background, right? Either execute or a config update, right? So I want to show an example of OBXML execute, and I think this is very relevant. I love this feature, and I highly encourage all of you to try it. And, and that is to be able to update your background screen live on demand without having to reboot your phone, right? Uh, five seconds from now, I could have a different background screen. Uh, you know, uh, if, if I know that, uh, you know, Joe is going to be visiting uh, cafeteria today, I want all my employees' background screen to be, hey, join us today. I could do that without interrupting their phone calls, without rebooting the phone. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So again, same thing. We have a desk phone. We have a soft switch. We have an application server. Again, application server is what I hope all of you here will be building, right? Because you are able to build all this uh, without, uh, uh, you know, uh, intruding into the uh, uh, soft switch uh, provider. Okay, uh, you know, we talk about setting a background screen, right? So again, there are many ways to set it. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to show you guys how to set it using the uh, phone web page. So if you go to user settings, user preference, background picture, you could go in and set any background picture you want, right? Uh, and for this example, I have this background screen, right? So this is the screen that's sitting in front of my phone right now, right? Uh, but I want to make a very interactive experience, right? When it's Halloween, when it's Thanksgiving, I want to be able to have a different background screen. Again, without rebooting the phone, without interrupting the user's phone calls, without bringing down the phone. How do you do that? You use our OB XML execute. So the way you do it is, uh, again, you send a SIP notify to FreeSwitch. FreeSwitch will now send a SIP notify to the phone and say, hey, I want you to update this background picture that is currently on the phone called FreeSwitch tree to another FreeSwitch tree picture, right? Or, uh, and and the refresh wizard, all you have to type in is just BG pick, right? And what the phone will now do is it will go out and, and, and refresh itself by checking for a new uh, picture of free switch tree.jpg. So now you'll be able to go in and immediately refresh the screen again without rebooting your phone. Uh, and and uh, it changes from this to this. <laughs> uh, it's a really, really you know interactive experience. Very easy for you to create amazing uh, notification and and, and uh, experience for your customers. Okay, uh, I have about ten minutes to cover web hooks. <laughs> uh, I'll try my best to cover it, but I hope uh, just in the last uh, fifteen minutes or so, you guys get an idea of how to leverage our OBXML to create uh, a very interactive experience with your application with your workflow. So web hooks. Uh, you know, I would like to you know kind of share with you guys, given that you guys are on this call and spend your time uh, to listen to us. I will give you guys some uh, uh, news that not a lot of people are aware. Uh, we are going to have a new software release called 6.3.1 uh, two to three weeks from now. And I would like to give you guys a little glimpse <laughs> of what we are rolling out as part of 6.3.1. And the two that I'll give you guys a glimpse is that we're adding two additional webhooks. Uh, uh, you know, one is uh, uh, call connected. Uh, the other one is incoming call. Again, a typo on my side, okay? <laughs> Call ended is already available today. So move that third bullet item, upcoming 6.3.1, to the top, okay? So in this upcoming 6.3.1, we are giving you incoming call uh, webhooks and call connected webhooks. And the next couple of slides, I'll walk you guys through all this here, right? On how to leverage each one of them to create an amazing experience for your customer easily. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, customer profile lookup, right? I, I, I find it very disturbing that every time when I call a restaurant, they ask me the same question over and over again. Let's see, what do you like to order, right? Uh, do you say this, right? Just imagine if I call them and on their screen, they have the last orders, right? They will be able to intelligently you know, take my orders. Say, you know what, I see, I don't think you, uh, you meant pepperoni because for the last five orders, you ordered sausage, right? So I'm going to show you guys how to drive that type of experience to the phone via our uh, phone ringing uh, webhooks. 
so again, you have uh, your phone, uh, you have free switch, uh, you have you know the customer that could be calling from a cell phone, uh, from any carriers out there, right? The customer picks up the phone and say, hey, let me call. I want to place an order. Free switch receive the signaling, rings the phone. The phone see that hey, I have an incoming call webhook, a uh, configure on my phone, right? And it tells me that every time there's an incoming call, I need to call this pause machine CRM, right? And this pause machine CRM stalls all the historical record of the last five, 10 orders that this customer orders, right? So the phone will immediately webhook to your, your server. The server will now say, hey, you know, uh, you know I see that it's, it's uh, you know, a, a very valuable customer. I see the SC last ordered pizza Tuesday, January 22nd at 7.30. Uh, and the last order pizza was a large cheese pizza, right? Uh, so when this customer calls the, uh, 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 you know, the the, the the restaurant to place an order, immediately you get this very informative information on your phone. You could go in and select soft key to get more information, right? You could select a soft key to get the order history, right? Uh, and that is the type of experience we would like. Uh, uh, you know, most restaurants to experience or most uh, uh, IP phone user to experience. Okay, uh, the next one is what we call the, uh, you know, uh, call and audio webhooks, right? Can I, I kind of show you guys how earlier that we allow, uh, we have a way for the phone to initiate webhooks uh, for call states, for service states, right? Uh, and this example here, I want to show you guys the audio states and the call states, right? Uh, if for some reason you want to write an app, right? and this app requires you to track every single state changes of the audio channel, right? Changing from headset to a, a handset to a speakerphone to uh, the user turning off no no uh, no no audio channel, right? The timestamp and and etc. Um, so we now provide you an option, and this is under voice services, uh, the respective SP service action URL. OB status notify XML uh, URL, right? So you can go in and say, hey, uh, uh, I want for this example at the bottom, right? I'm basically saying that I want all the call status across all my six service provider, right? And I want to send it as, uh, as an OB status format, right? And the top left is what your server will see, right? As the audio channel is changing, you see this webhook to your server. Right, you could now then use this to deliver, I don't know, uh, a better dashboards, uh, a, a better uh, analytics uh, for your customers, right? Uh, and on the right, same thing, right? If if you want to write an app, and this app requires you to stay in very close touch with every single call state changes from ringing, connected, disconnected, right? Uh, the start time, the end time, right? We offer you the option to webhook it to your respective server. And the next option we have is called Call History Webhook, right? Again, I'll try my best to uh, cover and give you guys some, some, uh, some tricks, uh, but you know, uh, you know, we could definitely you know, schedule a full-up session, but I, I hope you know, with some of these things that I'm sharing with you guys, you guys will be able to go out and start creating some advanced app on top of it. Uh, so this one here, again, uh, the setting is under IP phone, phone settings, calling feature, call history, upload URL, right? Uh, so if you want to be able to, you know, upload call history, every end of the call, you want to be able to see the MOS call, the transmit packet, receive packets for that call, what codec is using, the packet loss rate, right? You want to be able to use this data to offer next set of experience for your customer. Uh, you could now just subscribe to this webhooks, go into the phone, uh, configure it via the web page or via our remote provisioning, and now the phone will send uh, this webhook to your server at the end of the call. Okay, uh, just a couple more slides, and uh, you know, I'll let you. I'll open up for questions here. Uh, the next one is call info SIP header, right? Uh, I find this very, very powerful too, and very, very underutilized. Okay. Uh, and I think this this is a very good example with the free switch, right? Because you guys have the capability to go in and, and play around with, with the SIP invite message. Uh, so today, uh, as part of our SIP invite message, uh, we offer you the option to put something called call info as part of your SIP invite, right? And what that uh, uh, allows you to do is to drive custom pictures from the cloud or from a local server for every single call and to drive the organization name. And last but not least, 
to have a soft key at the bottom called call info. If you look at the bottom, I have a screenshot that says call info. Uh, you could go in and configure your soft key uh, uh, and, and upon the SIP invite, when the phone is ringing, there'll be this call info. When the user selects the call info, it basically will go out and fetch or webhook, it will webhook actually. It will webhook another uh, 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 you know, executable and uh, you could then you know, maybe drive uh, Gunnar Paltrow auto information or, or Richard content uh, to the user. Again, uh, you know, for this example, right? I, uh, you know, a SIP invite uh, came in, uh, screen pops, Gunnar Paltrow. I have an option for call info. When the user clicks on call info, uh, now the phone will screen pop to say, hey, you know, X, Y, Z, Gunnar just, you know, called recently at 6 p.m. He was interested in a 50 years mortgage for uh, her property in Beverly Hills, right? Uh, you know, to be able to better now talk to to Gan uh, to Gan of Paltrow, right? Uh, uh, so it provides some background about the uh, the call. Okay, uh, and just two more slides, uh, and uh, kind of wrap it up here. Uh, the last two, like I say, we have a separate presentation just on this, uh, but just to kind of cap it out, right? So we are going to be very focused on ensuring that the OB edition is very programmable. Uh, very friendly for developers. Uh, and, and to complement that, we need to make sure that we have a rich set of APIs uh, for provisioning, for firmware upgrades, right? For remote troubleshooting, right? And we have a platform called PDMSSP, used to be called OBTalk, that we rebranded PDMSSP. I uh, highly recommend you guys go and, and listen to the presentation that Wilson uh, and, and team did before just on this topic, right? And we do have service and management related APIs for our service providers, for our value-added uh, resellers, and for our DISTs. Uh, and the right is just a quick glimpse of some of the APIs available today uh, uh, with our PDMS SP uh, platform. With that, I'd like to thank all of you for your time, and I would like to uh, at least give uh, ourselves uh, five to 10 minutes uh, for questions. Uh, back to you, Mike and Kent. Okay, so we have a question from David, and he sure. asks, can I program the phone to auto dial a number when it boots and redial it if it hangs up? Basically, we need a never ending phone call, minimal <laughs> user interaction. Yes, actually we do have, we do have uh, another webhook that I did not specify here is that once uh, the phone reboots, when that service comes back up, we have a webhook for you to call immediately. So you could actually have that webhook triggers uh, and uh, uh, OBXML execute, they will call immediately. So, so, so David, I'm kind of curious to hear your use case though. Is it for like a call center? With like agents that are on it that are constantly in queues? Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting use case uh, because you could get into, you know, spam calling, you know, every time it reboots. Um, we recommend kind of a controlled fashion Right, uh, but if you do want the experience, like I say we have a way, uh, a, a webhook that I did not highlight today is uh, we call it the service webhook, right? Uh, and you 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 program that per SP, uh, and uh, actually most of our customers use that more for user login, right? So when when the service is up, type in your username and password, it then goes out fetch your uh, your credential and then boots up with your uh, your user, your your phone numbers, and your look and feel, right? Uh, but another way to skin this is that when the phone boots up with a service register, you call this server, and this server will respond with OBXML execute, which will then dial out uh, to a phone number. Well, you know, you know what's really interesting? You could almost create like an application with the webhooks, and with something like WebSockets, have a mobile app. The WebSocket shoots out the call, and then all of a sudden forward it out to the cell phone instead of going to like voicemail or something. Wouldn't yeah, that be yeah. cool? And as you guys are aware, um, on the OB2182, uh, we kind of shared with you guys that 2182 supports Bluetooth. So you could pair your uh, smartphone to 2182 and you could use that as one of your outbound phone calls. Right, so we do have a way to do that on the OB phone, right? Uh, we call That's it a Bluetooth cool. interface, right? So you could go in and program your inbound call route 
or your outbound call route to say, if I dial this number, uh, then calls out via this, uh, via this channel. And that channel is that Bluetooth, which is connected to your smartphone, right? So. Uh, so David and, answered as it's an intercom type application. Got it. Got it. Great. Any other questions, Mike, uh, from the audience? Yeah, actually, as a follow up to that, SD, um, is there uh, still programmability? I know the old Polycom firmware had this, but with the OB firmware, there are programmability so you can do like a hot phone. Um, so, you know, like you have a phone sitting in the lobby and if your reception is not there, uh, you know, a visitor can just pick it up and it automatically calls the right people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, today that is programmable as part of your uh, dial plant. Uh, uh, so every single one of our SIP registration or service, there's a dial plant. In there, you could define uh, two options. One is a hotline. The other one is a warm line, right? Hotline is basically once you pick up, you will call that number. A warm line is a pick it up if there are no entry for X amount of seconds. You could program it to however long you want. It will then dial out to that number, right? We call it a warm line. So those are all available uh, and programmable as part of our dial plant uh, string, outbound dial plant. Cool, cool. And then the other thing I was thinking about with with the call info SIP header, yes, like you, you could put together an application that like pulls your Google contacts. Yes. And then you get the <laughs> yes. I mean, we have. I mean, there are many different creative ways. Uh, you know, pull your Facebook, pull your Google, pull your LinkedIn, right? Um, you know, our goal is to you know look at ways for developers out there to create amazing experience, right? How do you make the phone relevant, uh, relevant again on the desk, right? And, and I, I think, you know, this is just our first uh, steps towards it, right? You're going to see more OB for developers effort uh, to make it even easier, right? It's like one second to do this, right? Uh, instead of going and writing some of this XML, how do you do it in one single line, right? So we are going to continue to invest in this space because we really think uh, this is the fastest way and it allows us to enable all developers out there to innovate on our behalf, right? So we're going to build this, you know, uh, layer of programmability for, for folks out there to do that. Yeah, it's all, it's all very, very cool. That's for sure. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in today and back to you, Ken. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. S.C. Lee, for coming in and joining us today. Um, always fun to have you here, so we appreciate Thank you coming you. back in. Uh, you guys, uh, be sure to check out all the fun stuff that you can do with the uh, OB firmware. There's a ton of stuff there. Uh, uh, and go back and watch the previous video where he was showing off uh, some of the cool provisioning stuff that they have. Because uh, it's uh, definitely interesting stuff, and you can definitely come up with some cool new use cases and applications for this. Uh, don't forget, uh, we'll be back here next week, Wednesday, right at noon Central Time. So uh, be sure you're watching Twitter, uh, you're uh, following us on Facebook, and uh, you're uh, clicking that subscribe button down below. You'll get the notifications when we go live. You'll get the notifications uh, as uh, we post the upcoming guests. So uh, come back and see us then. Have, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next week. You've been watching KuCon Weekly. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central. Keep up with the latest happenings by subscribing to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or visit us at freeswitch.com.